Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. There's still a lot of confusion out there, but the one thing you should never be confused about is if you don't understand the form that you're looking at, don't sign it. There are new forms coming out in the real estate world right now for both the sellers and the buyers. Sometimes people kind of gloss through those real quick and you get this complaint, I, I didn't really know what I was signing. But the one that's driving me absolutely nuts right now is agents saying that you are required to sign a form that gives them permission to show the home at an open house. Could not be further from the truth. And I'm seeing it on YouTube videos. I saw one from somebody from California saying, you know, when you go into an open house, you have to sign up this permission to show form. No, you don't. And I commented on it. And I copied from the National Association of Realtors saying, no, you don't. In fact, let me read what it actually says, just to be clear from the National Association of Realtors buyer representation. If a realtor is not currently representing a buyer, they do not need an agreement for every buyer who walks through the open house. Let me read that again. They do not need an agreement for every buyer that walks through the open house. However, and this is not that complicated, if the realtor expects to get paid for working with the buyer, they should get an agreement in place. We've got agents saying, I saw one the other day, I lost seven potential buyers because they wouldn't sign the form. Well, good for you. They don't have to sign the form. And if they walked away, they were smart. They weren't dumb. Because permission to show a home is when you call me and go, Rick, I want to see that house down on 123 Main Street. I have to get permission to show the form, you know, show the home from you. And it lays out my representation. Doesn't lock you into anything, folks. But read it. Read what it says. And it has a beginning date and an end date. But here's the other kicker. That's your beginning and your end date with me. So let's say you haven't made a decision yet on what type of agent that you're going to work with or who they are, where you're going to sign what's called an agency agreement, which means you agree to work with me to see you through the entire process of buying the home. That's called an agency agreement. The permission to view form to show homes is not tied to any agency agreement. Why am I telling you that? Get permission to show from me and get permission to show a home from, you know, Jessica, my broker, or somebody from Coldwell Banker and go out and look at homes because you're going to be seeing which real estate agent you want to work with. At that point, when you've made a decision, you know what? I really like working with Rick. Rick, let's sign an agency agreement. Let's, what can you do to help me go forward looking at a house? Now, you walk into an open house. You're going there to look at the house and the agents need to understand this. You're just walking in to look at the house, check it out. If at that point you decide, you know what, I'm kind of interested in this place. You can have that conversation with the agent that's at the house. And it's not always the listing agent. Sometimes the listing agent has another agent from their office, their brokerage sit in the open house for them. Whoever it is, you can talk to them and go, you know what, I'm, I'm interested in uh, this home. I currently don't have a realtor I'm working with. Would you be interested in assisting me in writing an offer for this home? Now, the discussion needs to go back and forth that says, actually, I can. Um, I can represent you as what's called an unrepresented seller, or I can enter into dual agency where I'm representing both the seller and the buyer. At that point is when you're going to discuss signing something. Okay, but not while you're in looking at the house. And it absolutely is so wrong. In fact, Zillow came out with something here, and I kind of like it. And uh, it's open house etiquette and rules. And it talks to you as a buyer, um, you know, what is an open house? And I have the link down below so you can look at it. Ho open house benefits for buyers, no scheduling, scope out the competition. In other words, you might be going to list your house down the street. Go to the open house for crying out loud. See what it looks like. Understand current home values. Redefine your, your non-negotiable home features. And then it tells you how they work. Who hosts an open house? Like I said, the listing agent, team member, or associate. And uh, how to prepare. Seek out relevant open houses. Zillow's got a great app. When we put it on an open house and we go into the MLS and we click a little tab there and we put on the date and the time for the open house it goes out to all websites so it goes out to zillow zillow is the number one it goes out to redfin goes out to realtor.com which is dying on the vine by the way um good 
Um, <laughs> stay open mind. How to attend an open house. Ask questions. Be honest. Now, as a real estate agent, I can tell when you walk in the door if you don't want to talk to me or not. I mean, you can just see it. People walk in and they get, they're afraid that I'm going to pounce on them and try to sell them the house. Now, as you say, welcome. Here's uh, the information on the house. Make yourself at home. Look around. I'm here if you have any questions. I don't chase you from room to room, but some agents do. I watch an agent chase a couple all the way out to their car once. Hey, let me know if you... Well, so, you know, you kind of got your guard up when you walked into an open house. But what you want to do is you want to walk in and you want to just look around. And you can say, you know, tell me about the neighborhood if you don't know the neighborhood. Sometimes the agent lives in that neighborhood and knows everything. Ask them where a good place is to have lunch. That's how you can tell how much they really know about the neighborhood. We're thinking about going and having lunch. Uh, any suggestions? Well, what kind of food do you like? Yeah, I like Italian. Okay, well, there's two. And, you know, now if he's not from the area or she's not from the area, you're not going to get any answers at all. So I kind of like that one. I've had open houses where I actually go to local businesses and put a bunch of coupons on a table. Well, go look at the table. I got a bunch of coupons, free happy hour, whatever. Uh, see what you can find there. But don't be afraid of the agent. Ask questions about um, the seller. Why is why are they moving? Uh, so you can get some insight. Are they moving because they have to? Are they moving simply because they want to? They're not going to talk price with you. So that's not going to happen until you get into an agency agreement. Now, sellers, getting ready to present your house as an open house, please, please, please lock your valuables away. Lock your medications away. I had a guy ride up on a bike once, run into the bathroom, and unbeknownst to me, stole the medications, put it in his pocket, thanked me for showing him the house real quick. I was just getting ready to close up, rode off on his bike. Found out later from the police that, yeah, there's a lot of guys using bikes because guess what? They don't have a license plate. They can't trace them. So they just show up on the bike. So realtors, if you're holding an open house and the guy shows up on a bike, follow him from room to room. Trust me. Had to fill out a police report, and they, they stole a whole bunch of medications. So homeowners, make sure that kind of stuff is not accessible. Make sure that your jewelry isn't there. Just anything you can think of, they're going to walk by and take. I'm really not comfortable hold, hosting open houses that are occupied for that reason. Ever since that happened, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll do it um, if you want one. And I think open houses are going to be stronger now than ever because of all the confusion out there buyers think they have to have an agent so they're going to want to go to open houses and look at one without an agent first and then make that decision later because they think they have to pay the agent directly and that's a whole nother video and you've seen me talk about that before but for sellers make sure your open house has room <clears throat> excuse me when people walk in a lot of room i like the at least three people wide so that they can get through some people put things you know plants or something to get in the way so make sure there's a lot of space talk to your agent about how to set it up what hours are they going to have the open house um, how many are they going to have um, don't do it on holiday weekends holiday weekends are terrible for open houses with one exception the best open house day ever is the friday after thanksgiving here in arizona why is that different well the holiday's over you just kind of have a friday now and uh you know the families kind of go well let's see what's available here and they're usually visiting from out of state they're from minnesota and uh, you wouldn't believe how many people come in from the midwest and the northwest come down here for the holidays and they don't want to go to the mall they don't want to go to black friday anymore so they go well we're going to catch a movie tonight but before we do that let's go to some open houses open house traffic is insane on the friday after thanksgiving a lot of looky loos but also some very serious potential buyers so keep that in mind labor day snoozer big snoozer poor agent you're going to be standing there all monday monday just begging for somebody to walk in look at your open house so i hope you find this helpful and i just really want to caution people if you don't understand the form don't sign it and if you have any questions at all shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com take care